Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. In the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 26th of February. Death toll from riots in the Indian capital rises to over 20. Prime Minister Modi appeals for peace. Sindhi, Baloch and Pashtun highlight atrocities by Pakistan in Geneva. And Nepal's opposition demands parliamentary probe in graft cases involving PM Oli government. And now for all the details. The death toll from the violence due to new citizenship law in Indian capital New Delhi rose to over 20 on Wednesday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi appealed for peace and brotherhood and said he has held an extensive review of the situation in various parts of the national capital. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday appealed for calm and peace in the national capital at a time where more than 20 people have already died in violent clashes that continued for three days in Northeast Delhi. Prime Minister Modi took to Twitter and said he held an extensive review meeting to look at the current situation. Had an extensive review on the situation prevailing in various parts of Delhi. Police and other agencies are working on the ground to ensure peace and normalcy said Prime Minister Modi. His remarks come after more than 20 people, including police personnel, have died in violent clashes between anti- and pro-citizenship Amendment Act protesters. Almost 190 people have been injured in the violence. India's capital has been the epicentre of unrest against new citizenship law that makes it easier for non-Muslims from three neighbouring Muslim-dominated countries to gain Indian citizenship. Meanwhile, Heavy security has been deployed in several areas of northeast Delhi in wake of the incidents of violence and arson. On the first anniversary of the Balakot air strike on Wednesday, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said that the country's approach in dealing with terrorism has undergone a major change and armed forces now do not hesitate to cross the border to counter terror. On the first anniversary of the Balakod airstrike on Wednesday, Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh in a series of tweets said that India's approach in dealing with terrorism has undergone a major change as its armed forces now do not hesitate to cross the border to protect the country against the menace. A fleet of Indian Air Force aircraft had struck a Jesh A. Muhammad terrorist camp in Pakistan's Balakot on February 26 last year in response to killing of 40 Indian paramilitary personnel in a suicide bombing in Pulwama in India's Jammu and Kashmir on February 14. Indian Air Force Chief Rakesh Singh Bhatoria said on Wednesday that Balakot airstrike's message was clear that there will be a robust response to a terror attack from across the border. The message is very clear that it will no longer be status quo. If there is an attack orchestrated from across, there will be a response and there will be a robust response. Tensions had flared up between India and Pakistan after the Balakot strike and the dogfights that followed, even pushing the nuclear armed neighbors closer to the brink of war. Moving on, Sindhi Baloch and Pashtun activists put up posters, banners, and props in front of UN office in Geneva on Tuesday to urge the world body to intervene and stop human rights violations by the Pakistan army against them. Activists from Sindhi, Baloch and Pashtun ethnic groups put up posters, banners and props in front of the UN office in Geneva on Tuesday to urge the world body to take immediate action against worst forms of rights violations by the Pakistani army against them. This came as the 43rd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC is underway in Geneva. The banners and posters condemn Pakistan's atrocities against minorities and crimes against humanity and blamed it for sponsoring terrorism 
while refusing to comply with UN conventions. Activists have long accused that Pakistani army uses torture, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and political repression as tools to silence voice and struggle of Sindhis, Baloch and Pashtuns. A cage-like structure incarcerating many queens portraying women and children in a symbolic enactment of the atrocities carried out by the Pakistani army was also put up. Activists have continued to highlight worldwide the plight of minorities in Pakistan for the past several years to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations. Closure at the Pakistan-Iran border continued for the fourth day on Wednesday amid the coronavirus outbreak in Iran. At least 15 deaths have been reported from Iran more than any country outside China where it originated late last year. The closure at the Pakistan-Iran border continued for a fourth straight day on Wednesday amid the coronavirus outbreak in Iran where at least 15 people have died. This comes as preparations are underway at the Taftan border post in Balochistan region frontier to receive travelers stuck in Iran. The Taftan crossing will be the only one of the five border gates with Iran that is to be opened and a basic 100-bed medical center has been created to treat the sick. तो उसके लिए ईरान गवर्नमेंट ने भी अपनी कोई मीटिंग की है और पाकिस्तानी कॉन्सुलेट से हम भी मिलके जो बाकी आने वाले जाहिरी ने उनके लिए कोई तरीका करेंगे। Cases of the coronavirus, also called COVID-19, have now exceeded 80,000 worldwide, with about 2,700 deaths, the vast majority in China. The U.S. State Department has urged Afghanistan to deal the ongoing election disputes with constitutional and legal means and focus on peace and intra-Afghan talks rather than electoral politics. The U.S. State Department has urged that disputes over Afghan presidential election results be dealt with using constitutional and legal means and without use of threat or violence. Spokesperson of the State Department Morgan Ortegas on Tuesday said that concerns have been raised about the election process in Afghanistan and that a department expects these concerns to be handled in accordance with constitutional and legal procedures. Ortegas further urged Afghanistan to focus on peace and intra-Afghan talks and not electoral politics. This comes as Afghan government has decided to postpone Ashraf Ghani's inauguration for his second term to allow adequate time for the government to agree on a national framework for potential peace negotiations with the Taliban. Disputes over the election results in Afghanistan erupted after outgoing chief executive and the main election rival of Ghani, Abdullah Abdullah, rejected the official results, calling them a systematic fraud. The complicated stage of Ghani and Abdullah, both claiming the presidency in Afghanistan, has arrived amid a week-long temporary reduction in violence agreed by the U.S. and the Taliban. When of thousands of Afghan badly injured during years of conflict, Nilo Bayat hopes for peace so that her wheelchair basketball team can take part in the Paralympics, but fears a return to power by the Taliban could quash her dreams. Nilo Bayat, the captain of Afghanistan's national women's wheelchair basketball, is one of the thousands of Afghans badly injured during years of conflict. She hopes for peace so that her wheelchair basketball team can take part in the Paralympics but fears a return to power by the Taliban could quash her dreams. 26-year-old Bayat suffered a spinal cord injury at the age of two when a rocket hit her house, killing her brother. Her injury limited her ability to run or jump but has not deterred her from studying, getting a job and pursuing her love of basketball. She began playing basketball with a team organized by the International Committee of the Red Cross or ICRC eight years ago. 
قسم که ما از قبلا امو چیزایی را که طالبا به یاد داریم چیزایی که قبلا بوده در افغانستان در دوران طالبا ای واقعا ناراحت کننده است و قابل نگرانی است ای فکر کنم تنها نگرانی ما و تیمیای ما است از تمام افغان است از تمام کسایی که اینجا زندگی میکنند Bayat's team has taken part in international competitions in Indonesia and Thailand, winning three medals in the process. But she expressed concern about a possible return to power by the hardline Islamist Taliban, who banned women from education, work or leaving the house without a male relative during their rule. The United States and the Taliban are due to sign an agreement on February 29 at the end of a planned week-long reduction in violence in Afghanistan, stirring fresh hopes for an end to the protected conflict. But for now, Bayat said she will shoulder on, continuing her work and also her basketball practices, in the hopes that one day, the Afghan national wheelchair basketball team will make it to the Paralympics. Nepal's opposition parties have demanded a parliamentary probe into allegation of craft involving leaders of ruling Nepal Communist Party. Lawmakers in Tuesday's parliamentary meeting demanded clarification from Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Nepal's opposition parties in the House of Representatives on Tuesday demanded that Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli furnish his clarification on corruption scandals, especially the one involving his close confidant, Gokul Prasad Baskota. Lawmakers demanded a parliamentary probe into allegations of graft involving Nepal Communist Party's Baskota, who recently resigned as communication minister. This comes in the backdrop of a leaked audio tape of Baskota in which he is heard negotiating kickback worth 740 million Nepali rupees with a Swiss company agent in the government security printing press procurement deal. <laughs> सीमा ना गया सर सत्तरी करोड़ घुस दिन चुवने ले तो वंदा प्रतिस्पर्धा का राज्य बड़ी घुस दिन ऐलाज है अन्य यो ठेका दिन यह व्यवस्था आये वंदा अन्य तीनी कलाओं दिन ऐसन मेरे सत्तरी करोड़ वंदा आज आरोप में खाने लाये सरकार तैयार हुआ ना ये वंदा लाज मर दी क्यों ना प्रधानमंत्री जो प्रस्ताचार � the Nepali House panel had last month started a probe into the complaints registered at the Public Accounts Committee, alleging that billions of rupees had been embezzled in the process of establishing the security printing press and procuring necessary equipment and machinery. Meanwhile, Baskota is being investigated on projects which were carried under his supervision. An Indian Buffalo race runner who became an overnight celebrity after appearing to break the world 100-meter record has declined to undergo formal training as an athlete in track and field trial. India's Buffalo race runner of Paddy Phil, Srinivas Gauda, who became a social media sensation after reportedly beating Usain Ball's 100-meter record, recently has declined offer to undergo formal training as an athlete. After competing this past weekend in a Kambala event, a traditional Buffalo race of India's southern Karnataka province, Gauda said he has declined the offer so far as those who have done well in Kambala cannot replicate in the other. अंग्रेज़ ये कमला दिल्ली वोट बेक कर दे ना न्यूलोर से दिन द समय पड़ते दिले तरह बेते ले पड़ कोंडी दिले ट्राय कल वोट ली कस्टु सुलभ अगी वोट ली का कस्ता ये कंद्रे ना चिकन दिन लो कैसर गद्दे ले वोट दोनों ये गद्दे वोल्टा ये गद्दे ले वोटी अदने अदरले तरह बेत मर पड़ कोंडो ना ये का ट्राय कल ले � India Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju said he had sent tickets to Srinivas Gauda, but if he won't come, then they won't force him. However, we want to give him every possible opportunities, Rijiju said. Olympic sprinter Bald set the men's 100-meter world record in 2009 by clocking 9.58 seconds, a distance which Gauda seemed to have completed in 9.55 seconds with the help of two buffaloes. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsland.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.